Confluence 2017 is here and we are getting some of the fantastic artists from India and uh, we are getting a famous Bollywood playback singer and we all know Kavita Krishnamurti, now Kavita Subramaniam. Kavita, welcome to the program. Thank you. So wonderful to be here as part of Confluence and exchange of cultures. Wonderful. Yes, uh, we always admired uh, the cultural link between India and Australia, for that matter, India and all other countries, so rich in culture. Uh, you said that it is a fantastic uh, event. Um, are you happy to come and participate in this in uh, Australia? Yes, yes, extremely. We're really looking forward to our uh, concerts here. Today, of course, we are performing in uh, Sydney, and then we go to Melbourne and Perth. Uh, looking forward to all the three concerts and uh, it's also nice to be for me it's also nice to have my husband on stage along with me and he he plays his own classical but sometimes we end up doing something together in the end and i always look forward to that yes. and of course so you have got millions of fans around the world and uh, obviously they would like to know uh, in an unforgiving industry like bollywood how your career started actually my career started, I wasn't really planning to be in Bollywood because I wasn't born and brought up in Delhi and pretty far away from Bombay. But I think kind of destiny brought me, I was brought up by a Bengali aunt who was very close to Hema Malni's mother. And Hema became, Hema ji became a star and I also won a few competitions in Delhi, music competitions when I was a kid. So she, it, she was kind of determined to make me a playback. She saw my future as a playback singer. So she held my hand, brought me to Bombay, got me admitted to St. Xavier's College. St. Xavier's College, Bombay had a, a very, very good platform for singers because as chief guests, all these playback singers would come, including Hemant Kumarji. He came, he spotted me, invited me on stage, and then subsequently Manna De Uncle called me on stage. And in fact, that was my first trip to Australia too later on. And then one thing led to another, then singing songs for Lakshmi Kant Pyaralal, dubbing for Lataji, like singing for shootings and Lataji would do the final song. And when I started dubbing for Lataji, finally some songs got kept, like Mang Bharo Sajna and then Pyar Jukta Nahi. And after Pyar Jukta Nahi, slowly Karma, I got my song. Then I think Hawa Hawa in Mr. India was the one which really brought me to the forefront. So yeah. one thing led to another and and before I really realized I was already singing for movies, it was absolutely yeah. wonderful. You have worked with uh, almost every music director from uh, Lakshmi Kant Parallel, of course, uh, who uh, is your, would I say, your uh, uh, most favorite director? <laughs> Lakshmi Kant Parallel gave my break and they gave me a lot of songs, but yeah. I was very fortunate enough to have worked. I have sung for Noshad Saab, I have sung for Khayam Saab, Opi Nayar Saab, and all the stalwart, um, see Ramchandarji, I sang with him on stage. Yeah. So I was, I have worked with stalwart music directors of that generation. Then I was able to sing with Kishor Da, Manna Da, Heman Da, Mukesh Saab on stage, Talat Saab. I sang with that generation when I was in college, I used to do concerts with them. And then also, then came Lakshmi Kant, Pyarlal, R.D. Burman generation, I worked with them. And then later on with um, uh, Jatin Dalit, uh, A.R. Rahman and all the other people also. So I think I was able to work with a cross section of, um, you know, artists from that generation to this generation. So I've been very fortunate, fortunate enough to have gathered experience working with very very different kinds of composers you know sometimes being able to sing a song based on a raga sometimes hawa hawai tu cheese badi hai must must kind of item songs and then uh, ismail darbar gave me some fantastic songs in devdas and hamdil de chuke sanam so i think a lot of different kinds of songs came my way which i'm very happy about mm. well i know that all uh, music directors are uh, uh, fantastic music directors, but if I ask you to put a finger on the music director, apart from Lakshmi Kant Parallel, of course, who gave you the break, who is the one who is your favorite to work with? I think one of the greatest, uh, one of the greatest music directors, one of the nicest people, and I would say the most versatile music director I've ever worked for is R.D. Burman, undoubtedly R.D. Burman, very, very talented, and, you know, years ahead of his thinking when it comes to arranging a song, the percussion sounds. He was also into world music, so he gave a lot of different colors. Even his very uh, very classical based song, he will bring in a foreign note and yeah. make it sound different. So he was very, very talented. And it's, an, it's been an honor to work for R.D. Burman, yeah. especially Love Story in 1942. Yeah. Yeah. Did you happen to meet his father, S.D. Burman? 
he came uh, just vaguely he came as a chief guest for one of the programs when I was performing with Manna De Uncle he was there in the fir first row and I was kind of nervous I was not a playback singer those days mm -hmm. but I was starting the show with Pia Bina from yes, um, yeah, so right. that was his song uh -huh. after that very soon after that he died actually yeah. so I didn't get to see him otherwise mm -hmm. he and Roshan Saab yeah. two people I've admired and Madan Mohan three people I admired but who all really oh, passed yeah. away before I became a playback singer yes yeah. Well, we all listen to, starting from Mr. India songs uh, everywhere, in the house, in the car and everywhere. But uh, which is the song when you recorded and then when you probably went home and put your feet up and listened to it, you said, yes, I have, this is the most enjoyable and most satisfying song. There are quite a few for different reasons. I would say Hawa Hawaii is my all-time favorite. It's th today, I think this is the 30th year of Hawa Hawaii and I still, I don't think, normally any Bollywood concert, I cannot come off without singing that song. So even today, people love that song. I think Love Story in 1942. Then I think Hamdil Dei Chuke Sanam is, that especially the title song is one of my most favorite songs. I think Ismail Darbar has done a fantastic composition. He's really composed the song well. And I would say from with Rehman, I did Tuhi Re and I really enjoyed singing Tuhi Re. I, th I thought Tuhi Re was a very beautiful song. So I would say probably these four songs would be the highlights of my uh, career. Yes. Actually, A. Rahman was here a couple of days back and we I was in the concert, he was also in the concert and we were all remembering you. <laughs> yeah, he's given me some very, very, I, I haven't, I have sung a few songs but he's given me like Pukar, Kesara Sara and then uh, of course Bombay and then uh, Mangal Pandey, he gave me a fantastic song. So he's given me some He's given me some very unusual songs in my career. Some because of range, some because of its Indo-Western colors. And uh, he's a very talented music yeah. director, of course. Of course, you have uh, sung a lot of songs in my mother tongue, Kannada. Uh, how, how, how did it come through? Well, one of my most favorite Kannada songs is uh, Hue Hue from H2O. I really love that song. Well, my you know, my very first Kannada song was when I just about finished college and I was called to Bombay uh, Lab in Bombay, Bombay Lab Studios, where B.N. Sharma was the recordist, you know, B.N. Sharma of those those days. And I remember going to the studio and seeing Girish Karnad and um, um, Bhaskar Chandavakar, and we did a song called Vanda Nandu Kala Dalli. My, there was one song, Vanda Nandu Kala Dage. That song I sang, and that was my, f I had sung jingles, but that's my first formal film song is that film. Yeah. And I thought it was a splendid song. And uh, yeah, we love it. yes, <laughs> and I, I have, s I've done some non-film too, but I love, uh, I love listening to when other people sing Purandar Dasa songs. I love listening to uh, yeah. some of those songs, yeah. and of course Krishna Ni Begane. There's no yeah. doubt it's one of the most outstanding songs <laughs> I've ever heard. Yes. Well, uh, you actually got married in my hometown, Bangalore. <laughs> yes, I know. Uh, it has all happened very quickly, yes. Uh, is it fair to say that your passion for music brought uh, you two together? I would say that because we wouldn't have met otherwise. Yes. So he called me to, at that time he was doing a pro project called Hey Ram, which yes. didn't come about, but that's how I met him and I sang for him in the studio and that's how he met me. And uh, then I did some fusion, uh, I sang for his Global Fusion album. I think it was our bonding uh, for music and my children are all into music. Yeah. Ambi is a violinist, Bindu is a singer-songwriter yeah. and Raju, my eldest son, is a doctor but he sings in yeah. Hindi also. Yeah. So all of us as a family are linked together. I think music has been the driving force for all of us. Yeah. And my husband has been a very, very supportive in the sense, after marriage, when I go up on stage and I'm saying apologetically saying you know um, uh, what should I sing he would say sing Nimbuda I like Nimbuda I said really <laughs> Dr. Subramanian you like Nimbuda he says yeah yeah I think it's a fantastic song so he's been very supportive of my Bollywood career and also after that he's made me do a lot of um, original thinking in music like he's written a symphony piece for me like a first, I would say, for an Indian voice to do an original symphony orchestra piece. He's a very good orchestral writer, oh, okay. completely. So he's done a piece called Bharat Symphony, which kind of musically shows the history of India, kind of a thing. So he's written that piece with my voice as the vocalist in it. So Freedom Symphony, he's done a lot of original work for me to sing with orchestras. 
I've done fusion with him for with great jazz artists on stage in Lincoln Center and he's made me experiment a lot in music and he is really really supports me in whatever I want to do in music and also uh, has forced me to compose a little bit for myself so that I I did a Durga album which I've composed myself some bhajans which I've composed myself so he encourages me in every way yes but uh, after marriage I think your uh, interest has taken a big turn into fusion music and uh, Bollywood seems to have taken a back seat Actually, the reason Bollywood uh, took a back stage is not only because of me of my moving out or anything like that but it's just that I think Bollywood trends changed a lot the trends were more uh, towards uh, very different kinds of modern songs and the Ismail Darbar kind of songs, the Lakshmi Kant Pyarelal kind of songs, or the Ardi Burman song kind of songs don't get made. It's very different now. The whole scene has changed. There are a lot of new Sare Gama singers and a lot of new music directors and uh, a, a different production quality of songs. And personally, I would feel the lyrical quality of songs have dropped a lot. Yeah. Those great writers like Anand Bakshi Saab, Sahil Ludhyanvi, Machu Sultanpuri Saab, Anjan, uh, Gulzar Saab, Javed Akhtar Saab, the way they wrote songs for movies those days. Now I find lyrically it doesn't grab me anymore. And uh, I think the whole, actually the whole system has changed and I personally feel if I don't get a song which is like Devdas or Hamdil De Chuke Sanam, I feel there's no need at, for, at this point for me to sing an item song, there's no need. Because I would rather uh, look at songs with more lyrical value and I would like to do a lot of non-film albums. But film, I think, I listen to today's songs and I feel probably I'm not missing very much. Because the composers gave me very good songs those days. I don't know if anybody will... I have sung, the last few years, I've sung some songs which have come and gone. Even I haven't realized when they have come and gone, yes. you know? Yes. Mm. Well, what uh, future... Uh, have you chalked out for yourself, Kavita? Well, this year I'm looking forward to doing Bharat Symphony wherever I can and I, the, symph the symphony orchestra and I want to do it in a few countries if I can. We finished US, we did a concert in US and Latvia and we look forward to doing Bharat Symphony in different places. I look forward to doing a few non-film albums. I'm looking forward to doing some uh, bhajan albums. I've done a Durga Ma album and uh, maybe if possible in the future a Ghazal album. And there's an album which I've sung for my husband in Hindi, which has some uh, male duets also. I've sung duets with uh, Hari Haran, Pandit Jasraj, Sonu Nigam. All of them have sung with Nishan. So I want to uh, release that album next year. Early next year, I would like to release it. You have uh, sung with a lot of uh, male singers, almost everyone in the yeah. Bollywood industry. Uh, who do you think uh, the sort of uh, the you wanted to sing again and again with? For me, the iconic singers, of course, have been uh, Manade, uncle. I think he is a tremendous singer and singing with him, the most of his compositions are very difficult. So it's not easy to sing with Manade, uncle, and I would say Kishorda. I've sung with Kishorda, I sang for Mr. India and uh, Karma and all those films. The, his throw in the microphone is, just can watch with what perfection they throw their words on. Yes, absolutely. Another singer from the South whom I really think is fantastic was S.P. Balasubramaniam. I've sung a few songs with him. S.P.P. is absolutely amazing, you know, he's just a great singer and uh, I think that, you know, Yesudas, S.P.P., uh, Manada, um, Kishurda, all of them were legendary. It was great pleasure singing. And in my time, I think I have enjoyed, I won't mark out anybody special, but I've enjoyed singing with Kumar Shanu. Abhijit, Udit and Suresh and Hari Haran. Yes. With five of them I've had good duets with all of them and they're all uh, thing. And amongst the next generation I would say Sonu Nikam stands out because of his yeah. career. Yes. Yeah. Of course. Yes. And uh, you also started a charity organization in Bangalore. Can you tell us a bit about that? Well, it's not exactly charity. It's called Sapa Foundation. Yeah. So we have a music school where some, it's like a boutique school, not with too many children, but a few people. And out of that, whoever is um, very talented, then we try to give him a scholarship so that he doesn't have to pay to learn. And these children are learning, and my children have started Sapa in schools where uh, uh, compulsory, I think 15,000 children are compulsory learning classical music, out of which two schools are very, very poor schools where we somehow try to pay the teachers and uh, the children don't have to pay. We give the books free and everything like that. So we want to catch on a few more poorer schools if possible because we feel that um, 
if we give an opportunity to the poor people to learn music, these children, then there is a profession for them in that. Yes. They can, if they are very talented, they can be musicians. And if they are not so talented, we can absorb them as teachers. Mm -hmm. So essentially, I think those poor children who feel that they can, they don't have money to be an engineer and a doctor, we give them a respectable profession so that they earn enough to have their own home. And we would look. We are really trying to see how we can further this program by adding a few more poor schools. You know, maybe the Akshay Patra schools, where you know, so where food is given free to them by ISKCON. We would also like to give music free to them. So we are trying, but we need, of course, we need some more corporate. Uh, we need a lot of corporate support, yes, which has right. to come its way. We are trying. We are mm. trying as much as we can to do this. How did you choose Bangalore instead of Chennai or Bombay? I think that was my husband's choice because he and the children really like Bangalore. They, though my husband is born and brought up in Chennai and then he left for US for many years. When they came back, they somehow my husband uh, thought Bangalore was very peaceful and that he would be left alone to do his music the way he wants to. And I think for us, for all of us, Bangalore is a favorite city. I go to Bombay for work and I have a small home there. But I wait to get back to Bangalore. I really um, like Bangalore a lot. I won't argue with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very pleasant city. Finally, Kavita, please give our uh, viewers a message uh, for about this confluence. Firstly, I'd like to say that I'm very happy to be part of confluence. And I think all these festivals should be encouraged because uh, music and arts has, as you all know, has no language, no caste barriers, no religious barriers. And I think we can come across and make friendships with different uh, countries on the basis of uh, music and spread the message of uh, peace and harmony. And after these concerts, if we inspire a few children to go and learn music and do it seriously, I think our job is done. Because I personally feel the more and more people get into music, there'll be less violence in this world. And there'll be, um, it's a fantastic de-stressor for people who want to make it a profession and non-profession music and arts are very, very de-stressing. So I advise all children to be in it, all parents to encourage their children to be in arts. And I'm always happy to be part of a festival where if we can contribute towards this direction, I'm very happy to be part of it. Kavita, we absolutely enjoy your voice and we are honored to have you in Sydney for coming to Confluence. Yeah, thank you so much.